there. Hello. It's Tuesday, November 24th, and you're listening to the Next Level Podcast, Episode 5. I am Emmy Basavand, and with me is Jiggity John Danho. Jiggity Jiggity John Danho. And Miggity Meher Oppo. I'm not going to say that. Hello. <laughs> Guys, I'm sick. Or a little sick. I'm recovering. I'm feeling better. I'm, I'm with you there. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. You should be. It was you all fucking my fault. schlub. <laughs> it was all my fault. Yeah. You are last the very week, thing that we have defined but then, last week. But then week. hold on, gentlemen. This begs the question. Okay. Who got me sick? Okay. The answer to that question is my friend, Vahak, who, uh, you know, is... Our mutual friend. Yeah. Someone we okay. all know. Okay. He's the root of the problem. I All just right. wanted to make that He's clear. the root of all our sickness. And dude, honestly, Saturday came around and I was just telling you guys that earlier, but I could not like even function well. Like my voice or, or my uh, throat was absolutely hoarse. Oh, yeah. Uh, just it, it was tough to swallow. It, like, But even beyond that, my light or my head was very light. Like I would get up and I would just feel dizzy. My uh, joints would ache randomly and it was hard to move around. Like it, it was kind of just affecting me in very weird ways. And I rarely ever get sick. Mm. I mean, and you're, then, you're describing a, a common sickness. Yeah. I mean, these are all symptoms. Yeah, but I... Well, <laughs> that happened to the average sick person. No, no, you're right. Well, I got sick in a different way though. Like yeah. I just completely lost my voice. On Sunday, I was trying to talk. I couldn't. That's true. That's, That's true. That's the thing. Like I don't expect to have my fucking aches... Uh, or like my joints ache and everything like that when I have a sore throat. You yeah, know, no, like I feel like it's unrelated. But I had all that happen, and then the next day I woke up and I feel like as like chip as a chipper. Mm-hmm. Like you know, just uh, absolutely fantastic. So I don't know. It was yeah. very temporary for me, at least. You must have a strong immune immune system, man. Dude, it, my, I'm I'm it's literally surviving. Yeah, it's the mustache. That's actually. all that beer. It's it's all, all that yeast is eating up all the bacteria. <laughs> yeast. Dude. What's that beer in your hand there, John? What'd you bring for us today? The beer in my hand is a Saison Pampelmus from our local brewery, Golden Road, in mm. Glendale on San Fernando. Uh, I thought we could go with something a little more home homegrown today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm reading it. It says a collaborative endeavor. Man. I don't know what that means. I've gone oh, on man. this rant before. Why can't they just say something like a good beer? Why, why does it have to be a, a collaborative endeavor? Why, do, why is this beer an endeavor? It's oh, not. shut up, dude. It sounds good. <laughs> I mean, What do right. you mean it is an endeavor, dude? To make, have you ever brewed a beer? I, I guess I haven't, man. Okay, dude. Then how do you know? Maybe it's like a, maybe it's like a Lord of the Rings style journey, like oh, from man. from the Shire to Middle or uh, from the Shire to Mordor, and like, and you're gonna toss the the ring in, and then your beer like comes <laughs> yeah, out. That's you how know? beer is made, man. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough, guys. Yeah. All right, that that rant was. You going gotta nowhere. throw the hops into the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that's how it works. <laughs> it's pretty good though, John. It's it's a pretty good selection. Surprisingly good. Uh, it's it's made with a uh, grapefruit or mixed with grapefruit, I think. Oh, brewed with grapefruit, ale brewed with grapefruit. I don't like grapefruit at all. Generally, I, I think it tastes pretty awful. But this beer is surprisingly pleasant, pretty mild, uh, and it comes in a can, which I like sometimes more than a bottle. Hmm. So, you know, can't complain, dude. On all fronts, you, all you, cylinders you can't are firing. Complain. I can't come. It's time for you to shut up, Eddie. (laughs) Dude, so I was at, uh, like, uh, the reason that I got the the Golden Road. Yeah, is this uh, a craft beer, beer, John? Yeah, it's a craft beer. Uh, But I basically wanted to do that for a very specific reason. I was reading this article uh, recently that Maher, your brother, linked me. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about how uh, different, like, Basically, it was talking about like the culture of beer, the culture of craft beer and how that's changing. So so what makes a craft beer a craft beer, John? What makes a craft beer a craft beer? One, that they have to use uh, natural ingredients. So they have to use like uh, hops, barley, I think they have to use. And they just recently made, I think, yeast the like an acceptable uh, ingredient to use. It's not usually used in craft usually beer. Usually if yeast oh, was in beer, really? it couldn't be considered a craft I beer. I always so, thought yeah. yeast was like just necessary thing in beer. I don't I don't believe so. Maybe maybe not in craft beer. Okay. But um yeah and so that's one thing. Another thing and this is the probably the most interesting thing to me uh is that you cannot exceed the sale of six million uh bottles I think in the year. Okay. Now this used to be two million but what happened was the Boston Beer Company, which does like Sam Adams, yeah. which we've had here and loved, uh, they used to produce a lot more, right? But they still wanted to be considered craft. So they lobbied to have it 
moved up That's to nuts. six. <laughs> so that Is got this me, like more of a recent thing? Yeah, it's pretty recent. Huh. And so it got me thinking uh, just about how like you can politic in the beer world. Like what goes into deciding what makes beer craft, what doesn't, like how you can basically uh, like kind of, I guess, politicize your way to say, oh, I want to change the rules or I don't want to change the rules, like, et cetera. So I guess, I guess the keeping a beer craft is almost like a very hipster thing, you know, like, I mean, if it's, something, if something yeah. ba- you're basically telling me if it goes too mainstream, if there are too many of them, then well, it stops being labeled as a craft yeah. beer, which uh, doesn't make any wait, sense. Wait, so do they actually label, does it say craft beer on the actual can? No, I don't believe so. It doesn't say it on... It just says uh, so made then in what's LA. The point? I like, guess. why are they killing themselves to be labeled a craft beer? Like, yeah, what I difference? Th- does I it think make? it just has its own kind of market. Craft beer just has its own kind of market, and it has its, uh, like a certain demographic that only well, like hipsters and man buns and I people guess, like, who drink know, out of fucking mason that. jars. Well, no, not only that. Like, for instance, <laughs> for instance, if you uh, if you were to go to like Colorado and see a Golden Road beer there, yeah. you'd be kind of like weirded out because Golden Road is from here in Glendale in LA, you know, yeah. was born in here, bred here, like it was brewed here. Like 2011 is when the brewery started, I believe. And like they, it, it's like, it feels like it's part of your home. So you want to imbibe that beer more than others, perhaps to support your local brewery, to support the people making it, et cetera. Now, if it gets bought out, which Golden Road was bought out yeah. and and one of the big controversies now is that Ballast Point in San Diego is being bought out by the same company that does Corona and Modelo. And so what makes it still craft? What makes it still homey? What makes it your beer now? What Like if you were born and They're raised in San Diego. Here. They're still like doing everything yeah, here. I, it's no, just they I, have more funding yeah. from a bigger company. I, like, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't, I don't either. I don't understand why people are like putting up pitchforks and it, going for it this. just is a controversy man when you when you decide to, well because what the first thing that makes a craft beer a craft beer is that the brewery that brews it cannot be funded by a large corporation more than 25 percent of its production wait is that true? yes that is true that uh-huh. is that is one of the main bullet points of of how to okay. how to be qualified as a craft beer so now if it's not called a craft beer anymore and it's not considered a craft beer that might just turn people off and in, and like if they're going to distribute it more widely then it maybe it loses its quality or maybe it loses a little bit uh, of its like flourish like golden road is opening up four different places around anaheim lax it's a oh, really? yeah like i mean they're they're growing which is not a bad thing dude that's what businesses do and yeah. that's what they should do but like it that's why it's controversial you have like i feel like it's easy to understand why people don't like it yeah. like why they want it to stay a glendale only brewery that that ships around yeah. uh, southern california it makes it homey it makes it you know your yes it makes it brewery. my beer like i can yeah. say proudly like there's a golden road here but then someone would be like oh but you know what dude i went to the golden road in anaheim it's yeah. the same thing no you know it's not the same i, I <laughs> like like there's gonna be that rivalry there's gonna be that ca- like i it just ceases being what it once was. Mm-hmm. It's growing. And some people, you know, it's growing pains. Some people don't like it. So I, that's why I chose it anyway, was simply because I read that article and it reminded me of that. And I love Golden Road beer. Well, this so. tastes like a craft beer. It tastes great. It tastes fantastic. I love it. Yeah. Mr. Saison Pampomus. Yeah. Yeah, not Digging a fan it. of the name, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Golden Road kind of weirds me out. Why so? The the location? No, no, not only the location. Well, no, not the location. The location's location weirds okay. me out. Yeah, location is like the industrial part of Glendale yeah. with all the, f- the shitty parking and the fumes and kind of the one thing that. that kind of like just pops out at me is that there are kids running around. Like there's like a little playground almost. It's like, a family it's, place. There's it's good a family food. place. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's not what you expect from a bar or a pub. And it's not. You're right. Yeah. But you know what, dude? Glendale is it's just a G-rated pub, man. Yeah. <laughs> G-rated pub. P- PG. All are welcome. PG. Uh, have a beer while watching your kids. Yeah, it may, dude, <laughs> you know, they, have, they have really good food. Wrong with that. They yeah. have really good food. If you yeah. guys have ever tried mm-hmm. it or not tried, like they have very good food, good appetizers, good like pretty versatile menu. Uh, Man, they better give us a free shirt or something for saying all this shit. I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing one of their hoodies that I bought. It that is actually my favorite hoodie. It fits amazing. Cool. Yeah, I have, I have also a Christmas sweater from there. <laughs> a Christmas sweater, like, is it like one of those just ugly christmas yeah sweater. Like, yeah it, it's actually okay. it's actually pretty poorly made it's not a good christmas sweater oh <laughs> it, but that is not indicative of their quality because this hoodie is a very good quality hoodie so 
but yeah, man, I, I love Golden Road. It's a family place, dude. And I, I just want to say that makes total sense because Glendale is very much a family city. Yeah. No, like it it's a suburb is. of LA. For those who don't know, it's a suburb of LA, but it's remarkably safe. It's very, it's like probably one of the safest places in SoCal, I would say. There's not a lot of like, uh, what, what do you call it? Like just like street crime. There's not any, really any so of that. So you're saying it embodies Glendale? Yeah, it's just kind of like a family place with shitty parking. And that embodies Glendale. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, man. The parking is so terrible there. Yeah, now. the parking is awful. <laughs> like they're making it even worse. I like don't they're, know how. they're putting like you can't park here signs on the road itself. What? So like no. a good the portion road of itself that road, is the only place you can ever park right? almost. Half yeah. of it you can. So you have to go through like the actual industrial parts and like go to those like shady alleys and try to find somewhere to park there. It sucks. Damn dude, I have to be sh- shady to drink. Yeah. What is this world coming to? Let's all move out. <laughs> Dude, maybe we could go to San Diego, go to the Ballast Point Brewery and that got bought out and see if they're doing well. Who I like San out, Diego brews. Who bought out thing? Uh, Golden Road? It was like Anheuser-Busch, right? Yes, Anheuser-Busch, yeah. I mean, bro, like if they get bought out, they get bought out. As I said, I don't think it's like a, a huge issue, but I do understand why it's controversial. Yeah. And I can I can definitely like Relate empathize with people. Point, yeah, yeah, I can empathize with people who like are would be upset by it. But it is what it is. Yeah. And generally craft breweries are it although this is not like a fact of what they are they generally tend to stay small and tend to tend to stay local so by moving around uh they kind of lose that like qualification by the brewers association i suppose and yeah i mean it's just one of those things one of those little facts of life i believe today we were interested in a pretty cool topic when it comes to video games and technology in the future yeah i think we're going down a very interesting path when it comes to technology and what we're talking about right now is virtual reality virtual reality yeah virtuales (laughs) realismo realismo (laughs) it's interesting man i mean so today i googled virtual reality <laughs> okay. video games all right okay i i just googled virtual reality and i, I wanted got some no, pretty pretty like so i wanted responses. to i wanted to see uh what would come up what would be the first thing that comes up and the first thing that came up was something called virtuox omni yeah which is i've heard of that which is a virtual reality system that is available right now it's okay. like a treadmill or something yeah yeah so i i looked up you know i wanted to see if it was good if it was something that someone would buy. Like okay. you don't necessarily just have to have a shit ton of money just laying around to buy. If it's something that I would actually want to buy. And it turns out it's actually kind of just like a treadmill that you connect to your TV. You okay. know, it's, it's just, it's something that it's like a, it has a circular concave surface. Oh, so it's not real. So you could like strafe and like pretend that you're walking freely. It's it's but, actually interesting. You can't strafe well on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are going to be problems. Yeah, with that. there's a lot of limitations to like the direct. Like it's a joke. It's considered a joke. Like no. Yeah, one, yeah. I mean, it's it just seems like something that's trying to come out ahead of its time. That's what it seemed like. Hmm. And it it's also only compatible to to PC games. Sure. Um, well, which is okay. I think I actually think Oculus Rift is going to be like that as well. No. No? Nope. Oculus Rift uh, has a deal with Microsoft, so it's going to be fully integrated with the Windows 10. Oh, that's true. But, I mean, that's that's PC, but they're they're streaming Xbox One games to the Oculus Rift. And while... Oh, interesting. Yeah, and while uh, those games are not necessarily going to be virtual games, you will be playing them, like, on a... Like, it'll basically be that if you have the Oculus Rift on... Okay, Okay. it's like, so for people who don't know, the Oculus Rift is basically like this head peripheral. It's like uh, big giant goggles that you wear, right? That show you like the virtual world or like get get you integrated in the world. And so uh, in in the case of the Xbox One game streaming, you you put on the, um, the Oculus Rift and you see it like a theater. So you can look around the theater, but the screen, the theater, like the monitor is going to be the monitor. Like, that's where the game is playing. Sure. But it's still streaming to the Oculus Rift. And that's, like, a huge, a huge, 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 like, victory for Microsoft, like, in this, in the market, pretty much. Because yeah. Sony's doing their own VR, the Sony VR. Yeah. And Valve is doing theirs for the PC, which mm-hmm. they HTC Vive. Yep. Yeah. So, like, Microsoft actually jumped in. The only one who don't, the only people who don't have that, surprise, surprise, <laughs> are good friends over at Nintendo. Oh, well, they have bigger plans. Uh huh. You they're think doing that. other things. You you think that man? You watch the NXP reality headset. 
Who knows, man? Yeah. Would okay, that be too know. would that be too crazy? Like maybe I think not. it would be very crazy. And you know what? Every purchase of an Oculus Rift comes with an Xbox One controller. As yeah, well. it does. Oh, really? but that hooks up yeah. to your PC, right? That's I cool. Believe, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could hook it up to your PC. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. recently, I think Xbox. they did that, so you can hook up your Xbox yeah. One controller to a PC. Like, but you know what, dude? Like, like in the last few months, thing. I I just don't I don't I don't know. It it feels like it's going to be very expensive because the Oculus Rift is going to be starting at around three fifty. And that's like a speculation. That's not official. Yeah, that they sounds haven't said it cheap, yet. dude. Okay, I, I thought it but was... you need but you need a very powerful PC. So the only cards that support it are like the GTX 970 and the highest mm. AMD ones. You know what I mean? So you're going to be paying upwards of like 1,200 for a computer, like homebrew homebrew computer, if you decided to make it yourself. And on top of that, 350 plus for the Oculus Rift. So you're looking at about at least fifteen hundred dollars if you want to do virtual reality. Well, this that's is, the cost. The, the reason is this: it's brand new. Yeah. Everything when it's, it's brand new, it's coming out. I'm not saying anything bad about you know? it. Yeah, but uh, I'm. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily like. I don't know. Like, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna get it at all at that price point. Yeah, just man, it's just kind of cool that it's coming out already. You know, yeah, it's quarter, gonna be available. Yeah, first quarter, most months. of them are coming out first quarter next year. Uh, yeah. The Samsung one is already out. The Samsung Gear. I don't know anything about it. Do you? I think that's the one that you hook up your phone. You can hook up your phone to the gear. And then, yeah, you can, like, watch those 3D YouTube videos. Have you guys seen those? Yeah, I've seen a couple. Yeah, that you can, like, pan around and you can... It's like a 360 view. I've of, seen, like, like 3D uh, three D GIFs, too. I've seen, like, there's, a, like, random stuff Oh, really? Stuff like 3D that, GIFs? Yeah, yeah. yeah is, it, GIFs, is it a GIF, GIF or a GIF? Whatever, man. I don't care. I don't want to get into this <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm only curious. Uh, I don't know. I I say GIF. Let's let's I say, oh, GIF it's GIF spelled G G I F. Yeah, whatever, man. GIF JPEG, <laughs> ping, PNG. Uh, but uh, either way, like I I definitely see the the value in that. But in the beginning, it's it's gonna be a lot of like apps and pretty meaningless games. Like I know like Half Life Two, Half Life and stuff. Yeah, man. Team Fortress yeah. Two is getting the integration. Ah, uh, okay, cool. But like, where's like the Skyrim? Where's the Fallout? Where's like those are the games that are made for virtual reality, dude. Where uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, the MMO, mm -hmm. is actually gonna be on Sony's VR. They announced it at like the the huh. Tokyo Game Show or something sometime okay. back, and like they're actually that's going to be one of their big things, and no one knows how they're going to do it or what that includes, but it's going to be for Sony VR. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. If you're able to do like first person uh, MMO style like combat and everything yeah. like that on, in virtual reality, that's exactly what people want. I think that's what people imagined when virtual reality first yeah. even entered their like lexicon, really. I would love to have like a VR headset and just walk around Orgrimmar or like just yeah. any of the cities in right. WoW. Like that's so ideal. That would be so cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Skyrim to me is like or the Skyrim. Ideal yeah, game like any of like that. just big areas, you know, for sure. Yeah, that's why this is. I mean, this is a big question that I have, and it's it's not something that I, I think we can answer right now. But so it's it's coming out very soon, and okay. initially it's obviously going to be like all other most other things that freshly come out. It's going to be like a luxury, you know? Yeah. It's going to be a luxury that, you know, if you have it, a certain video game experience will be great. So I'm just sitting here wondering, do you guys think that in the near future, we're going to reach a point where the virtual reality becomes essential to the gaming experience? Yes. And I'll tell you exactly why. Because Facebook is the one who owns Oculus Rift. And so that's why it's going to become mainstream. Because they want everyone to be on their platform. So you guys are, we're just talking about gaming. Yeah. But Oculus Rift is a Facebook owned like mm -hmm. research development product. And so when they release it, they're going to be looking at integrating Facebook and all social media, Twitter, f Instagram, Snapchat. Everything is going to be like somehow like evolving with that VR in mind now. It, they're basically creating a new platform for expression, yeah. for content to be born. That's it. That's as simple as that. That's the answer to your question. It's going to be as mainstream as mainstream but can get. But when? I don't know when. I would say we're going to be looking at it by the end of the like the next year. We're going to be getting good hints of it. But I don't know. I'm, that's a total out of my ass prediction. I think the biggest problem with VR that is kind of like turns off a lot of people, maybe subconsciously or maybe actively, I'm not really sure. But once you put on a VR headset, you're completely isolated from the world. You know? Like, you can't see what's in front of like you. Like, you're blind <laughs> to whatever's around you. Exactly. So, like, imagine someone is trying to raise a kid with, you know, like, on the VR headset. Like, you can't really do that. <laughs> it's like, I you have know? a crying baby in the <clears throat> other room. I'm 
So, honey, exactly I'll get to like, it in a minute. I'm, uh, I'm like <laughs> running raids with my boys in my virtual world. You know, like Don't that's worry. why at first I think people are going to be a little bit lukewarm to it. It's like gonna, not only because of the price point, but just because like it is such like an isolated experience. It's going to, I think, uh, as odd as this sounds, I think it's going to reintroduce like geekdom like as a derogatory way of looking at people back into nomenclature. Hmm. So I don't know, like, I mean, you guys have realized that like basically like being a nerd or being a geek or whatever has gone kind of like chic. Like it's a popular little hipster yeah, sure. thing to do Absolutely. nowadays. Yeah, big time, you know? Uh, and I think the VR, especially with the way that it's very bulky looking peripherals and like they kind of involve like kind of ridiculous motions of you acting in a room isolated. You look like a clown. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, going to be ill received by the mainstream until as i was telling you mohead that like facebook integrates it more into their platforms right or evolves their platforms with yeah it. but until then if it's only like a gaming tool it's gonna be seen pretty as i mean says it's gonna be seen pretty like i don't know shady, man you know it, it yeah. can it can be seen as like I mean, I don't know. It's it's new technology. Yeah. Yeah. So no, yeah, new like it's always going to take a little bit. Exciting. Yeah. But you know what? New technology is always exciting when it looks a certain way. So like, if you see someone like it, sitting in the Americana in Glendale with like a VR headset doing something, you're gonna think like, "What is this guy doing?" That's why you're probably never gonna do that and just do it in your home so, with well, your friends. Well, some people might do that, right? I don't. I, I, that's my personal. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I can definitely imagine some people would be doing that, a hundred percent. Or like, if you're going to like a hobby store and you see that, you know what I mean. But you're like just a casual, uh, like you just wanted to yeah, buy a board. Yeah, I see game what you're something. saying. I mean, right. that's years down the line, but I see what you're saying. Right. You see that and you think, okay, this is kind of like an odd situation. But you see someone wearing like the Google glasses and you don't think too much of it because it's it looks slick. It's the same thing as seeing like an iPhone versus like a flip phone. It's the same it also, thing. It's also it, it's doing like, something that's a lot less complicated. Yeah, I know. I, I well, agree with you, Mahed. But to the normal person who isn't involved or invested in this in this industry or this dem- or like this market, it's going to look odd. And it's yeah. going to be considered odd. Simply because it looks bulky and it doesn't look intuitive. It, it, you know? it definitely looks odd. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think VR is sort of the first step towards augmented reality ar like did you guys see the hollow ones demo that they did at e3 it's sort of like it's sort of like the google glass but it projects stuff onto the world in front of you so it makes it seem like yeah it's holograms but it's doesn't see like glasses that 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 you wear oh oh what yeah wait so your glasses project things yeah it's similar to the google glass i think they're like the google glass but it has spatial awareness wow yeah that's very interesting. Yeah. So like they did a demo uh, at E3 on like the Microsoft stage. It looks incredible. Um, it How looks... did the demo go? Like what did they do? They played Minecraft. Oh, yeah. man. Wait, how, but, oh, can you explain it to me? Can you like explain like I guess visually what that looks like? or how, like? So basically maybe, similar to what you were saying that um, it was like a movie theater screen okay. projected onto a wall. Mm-hmm. That's how it was before. So the guy had the Google, the HoloLens on. He was looking at the screen on the wall. And then he's like, hmm, let's see this on a table. So he basically snaps his fingers or does whatever. And there was a flat table. And the entire Minecraft world appeared on that table. And he In can, three dimensions? In three dimensions. And then he can manipulate it around. He could zoom in. He can, you know, like add blocks, add TNT, do but whatever it, he wants. It, okay, but like it's not that big, right? Because I mean, Minecraft is a first person game. So, but he was playing in third person. He was playing oh. like God mode. Oh, 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 oh I see. So yeah. he's like playing with Legos. It's like Basically. Legos. It's like holographic exactly. Legos. Mm-hmm. I guess you know that. That demo. is honestly interesting to me. Sandbox games, sure, with VR. Yeah, That's, of course. I mean, yeah. yeah. I just wonder. I mean, if you enter Minecraft in in a virtual reality, are, are you gonna have to swing your arm and pick at something a billion times? <laughs> you know how when you're collecting rock, you just click, 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 click. Yeah. It's like minimal physical effort. I'm fairly you're sure you're gonna have to like swing now. I'm fairly sure Microsoft's purchase of Mojang, who made mm-hmm. uh, Minecraft, exactly was not an those. accident. Yeah, because Minecraft is gonna be one of the main things on the Oculus. Wow. In launch. And I don't know how it's going to work because I, I mean, I don't have an Oculus Rift, <laughs> but yeah. um, that's yeah. just going to be tricky, I think, because there's a lot of grinding in that game. So, I mean, what do you really do in mm-hmm. Minecraft? You grind and you eventually have a vision, you create something and ultimately you have something cool. So, mm-hmm. like, how are they going well, to make that relevant be, it, to VR? Well, it's not going to be like a physical thing that you're talking about. You're going to have a controller. Yeah. 
Oh, so you're just going to be staring at what you're doing closer up, I guess? No, you're in it. You're, you're in it. You're in it. When Once you put on the VR headset, like it controls, it takes over your entire periphery. So it's so not you can like you're around. just wearing regular glasses. You can look around, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're 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 your guy. You're that Minecraft guy. That's that's it. Man, it's just a technology testament cool. to how crazy it is that I, I I'm having a hard time just picturing it. You Dude, know. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the augmented reality earlier. Yes. Uh, at, there's this funny thing. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called Pokemon Go. Yeah. It's it's like on the phone where it's it's like uh it's using real world real world locations and real world like events and stuff like that to you can like catch Pokemon in real life and battle other trainers who are in your area like who are just people like you and it's kind of it's like it's like a real life pokemon game and but it's through your phone and you see like and like the um like the pikachu or whatever is just like re interacting with like the world as you put as you like scan your phone over the area you know what i mean like yeah mm-hmm. it's just kind of, like i guess i guess as vr evolves that's gonna either evolve to or change depending you know sure but i think that's cool as well like that's just a Definitely a, a very interesting technology to approach. Um, I'm for it, dude. It's just, as I said before, the price point is just going to keep me away because I'm, I mean, I'm just very young. I don't have like the income necessary yeah. like to, well, to to support that. But I'm definitely going to be one of the early adopters, though. I think it's really cool. Well, you're just going to hit it up like almost. Yeah. Immediately. Like the question for me is, I don't know which one to get. Oculus Strip. In really? My opinion, Over yeah. the Vive? I don't know. I, the reason I say Oculus Rift, uh, and maybe it's kind of like an amateur opinion, but like I know because Carmack, you know, yeah. uh, like Carmack's basically a developer who's working on it, and he yeah. left his com- he left id and Bethesda to go work on it. Yep. And I mean that guy's like on a, Oculus. Yeah, and that I mean they were working on it first at id, and then mm-hmm. they moved over to Facebook after Facebook bought the property, and Carmack moved there. And Carmack is like a genius of the industry, dude. Like he's a, he's like one of those kind of programmers that. Or like just people who come along every now and then who just like, just think on a different level than and exist on a different level than everyone else. Like you can tell he he's not really thinking on the same wavelength mm-hmm. as the layman. Like he <laughs> yeah. he's just on a different wavelength completely. And so What's I have his faith in name? him. John Carmack. John Carmack. Yeah. He he did like the old Doom games. You know he did the old Quake games. He it was him. Wow. Yeah. He's the one who programmed them. He did the the recent game uh, Rage. That huge one with like the mega textures and the oh, amazing yeah, graphics. Right. Yeah, man. Uh, that was like. His technology, Doom 3, it was like him. He evolved that. Like, I have faith in him, so I would say, like, go towards the Oculus Rift. However... But my biggest problem with that is since Facebook owns it, like, are they going to try to make it more casual and make it more accessible to people? I'm a gamer. Like, I want something yeah. that will be, like, straight, like, right. catered to me. And, you know, like, that's what Steam does. That's what... Yes. Sorry, that's what Valve does. Yeah, you're right. Um, but I do know that... Uh, Facebook and Oculus Rift and like that whole uh, program, they're looking to integrate the Facebook stuff down the line. Hmm. I think they're gearing it right now more towards games. Yeah. At I this hope very so. moment. At yeah, launch, I hope so Because Half-Life and Half-Life 2 work on it, but Ob- Valve's working on their own thing. Because yeah. come on, man. You know, that's like, the first thing that comes to people's heads. So you're going to give me a virtual reality system? Let me play minecraft on it i don't yeah. want to i don't give a shit yeah, about no. facebook mm. like what am i gonna do yeah on no facebook? the apps the apps are gonna come down the line basically what they're what they're looking at is they want you to share like the same way on facebook you could share your pictures and your videos or and your posts or whatever they want you to share virtual experiences with people so how do you do that without the virtual experiences so i'm pretty sure they're gonna set the foundation up like you wouldn't have to be worried yeah and i do know that oculus rift at least at this point is probably a little bit more a developed an HTC vibe. So if you're going to be mm. an early adopter, man, just go with the Oculus Rift for now. And that's my opinion. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah. that's Unless you point. wanted to get the Samsung one or the Sony nah. VR or something, but... Isn't the Sony one only going to work on PS4? I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the Sony VR, but I'm glad it, they're, they're doing it. They're calling it the PlayStation VR, so... Oh, I'm glad yeah, they're probably. doing it, man. I, I think that's great. I think competition is the yeah, backbone is of, of like, yeah. innovation, so... <clears throat> Yeah. Kind of like one thing I'm curious about, like, so these different platforms, like the PlayStation VR, like the HTC Vive or whatever, um, are they going to have platform specific exclusives? Because I really hope it doesn't come to that. Oh, you're asking a, a question I don't think anybody right now is going to be able to answer. Like, Yeah, with but a, what with do you guys certain... think the direction everything is going to go in? 
I'm thinking it's going to be the same as the consoles. There's going to be exclusives. Yeah. But, I also think that. But, I mean, like, there's a... Even now, there's, like, tons of overlap between the different platforms. So. Yeah, but it wasn't always like that. Do you remember early PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360? Basically, every other game was an exclusive. That Dude, and that console on, war lasted so long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, like, by the end of it, that's where, kind of, everything started coming over. Like, yeah. Final Fantasy started coming over to mm-hmm. Microsoft and... Everything started getting mixed up. When like up. deals expired or whatever, exactly. backroom deals or this or that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I don't know. I I hope that, like I said, dude, I think competition is always good. I think exclusivity is good because yeah. it makes you want something over the other. It makes the other person want to improve their product or their lineup. And so I, if they're not going to do console exclusives or uh, VR exclusives, fine. But if they are, I'm fine with that. I'm glad for it. Cause I think yeah. I think they're gonna start doing more timed exclusives. Like it's gonna come out on one platform for like a year, and then it's gonna release on the rest later. Just Dude. because it's smarter for the developers. Yeah. Like why would they only like commit themselves to one platform when they have like four other ones? Hmm. Dude, like wh- I mean, yeah, like and at the same time, you you have a virtual reality system or a game or whatever. Those things are probably fairly easily modded and can be modded to the other platforms rather rather well hmm. why do you say that because like uh, what's really like you're gonna you're gonna state there's a huge difference between minecraft on the oculus rift and then minecraft on the htc vive i don't think the the technology is going to be too radically different especially now people are like uh like for instance you mentioned what was it called my that one you were saying earlier the treadmill virtuox on uh omni there hmm. you go that one has been modded so that you could play minecraft on that already cool so i really? mean yeah so I, i'm pretty sure that it's probably it's, pretty shitty mm. yeah well it doesn't matter if it's shitty or not it is what it is they i think the fallout as well has been modded for that and cool. and so it, it it honestly does not matter because if there's exclusives people will find a way to get around it so what's the point yeah what really what is the point like the technologies can't be that radically different unless one company just has such a secret leg up over the others that like it's just going to be the superior product then this conversation is moot anyway so (laughs) yeah that's about it man cool all right guys let's go ahead and take a little break and we'll be right back Hey guys, we're back. So, um, over the weekend, I have been playing a lot of Battlefront. Maher, you've been playing a little bit as well? I yeah. have been playing more than a little bit. And John has just been very angrily sitting in his house, crossing <laughs> his arms, saying how much he hates it. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. We know, John. <laughs> well, do I get to defend it? <laughs> First, you have to hear my criticism, man. Oh, by all means, John. What is your criticism? You know what, dude? My criticism is that it's a very shallow game. If you want to boil it down. It just front loads everything. It's just an aesthetic, nostalgia-driven piece of shit. That's it. Okay. So, from that, I derive that it's a shitty shooter. Right? Is that the criticism? Because you said it's nostalgia-driven, it's sound-driven, it's aesthetic-driven. Which means that the aesthetic aspect of it... I think we can all agree the aesthetics phenomenal. of the game are phenomenal. Yeah. They're excellent. They're, they're very good. Yes. So, what is the criticism that remains? The shooter, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Shooter and the stuff orbiting around the shooter. So, stuff like the card system mm. and generally how there's no classes, there's no more squads, things like that. Like It's just a very shallow experience. It's not anything that I would get behind as a good game. Fair enough. And I'd like to make clear that while I'm defending it, I, I don't think that the game is not flawed. All right. On the opposite, really. I think that there are a lot of wrong things about the game. And yeah. you're right to think that. But <laughs> to me, as I've said before, a lot of what it comes down to when it comes to a game like this is whether or not I'm enjoying myself while yeah. I'm playing it. Correct? So I was just thinking about this the other day. You know, a, a lot of the criticism for this game comes down to you know, it's a generic shooter, right? It's, it, yeah, you're in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, you're running around Endor or Hoth. But when it comes down to it, it's a generic shooter. Less than generic. Yeah. And I think it's okay that it is. Yeah. 
I mean, it made me think. How did they distance themselves from other shooter games, right? Because they had to do that. They couldn't just put out something that's, that plays exactly like Modern Warfare yeah. and just put it in the Star Wars universe. Mm. They had to distance themselves a bit from it, right? I mean, they could have made something that was exactly like Battlefield, but they didn't even do that, and that's their game. But why would they do that? It's not Battlefield. It's Battlefront, you know? Like, they're going with the two earlier games that came, and you know what? They were pretty generic shooters as well. Like, there wasn't too much setting them apart from shooters at the time, except the fact that, you know, you could get into vehicles, you can run around in third person. Like, that was... It was different. And right now... You know, it's not that different, but it's sort of the same kind of game that Battlefront 1 and 2 were. Uh huh. It's really not that far off from the thing that everyone loved, you know, yeah. back in the day. <clears throat> and you know what? You're right. Whoever says that it's a generic shooter, it's a weak shooter, you know what? When it comes down to it, you are correct. There's nothing groundbreaking about it, there's nothing that completely sets it apart from a game like Battlefield or Modern Warfare. But it does play into. The whole, you know, you're you're entering a separate universe. You're entering the Star Wars universe. Therefore, everything is gonna be Star Warsy. Yeah. You know, like when I when I hear me shooting myself shooting a laser blaster at somebody and I kill them, you know, I hit them four times and then they just plop back and die. You know, I think well, that's kind of Star Warsy, man. I mean, don't you remember all the Star Wars? It, it's not like an R-rated flick. You're not. It's yeah. not going to show bullet wounds. It's not going to show someone crying in agony as they fall down. It's like pew pew, you fall down and you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's it, it like it plays into the whole you know just Star Wars aesthetic that they're going for, and I'm totally down for that. And when it comes, it, it honestly comes down to whether or not it's a game that I can revisit, and it is. I think it is. You think it's a game that you'll come back to, let's say, three months down the line? Yes. And still load it up? And, and let me explain why. There's a criticism tied in there. It does get stale. Mm -hmm. The game does get stale. I find myself playing it for like an hour or two, or like two hours, and then I'm just bored of it. So, you know? let me just interject there, man. What, like... How does that? How does that make it a good game? Because you're because getting bored games, after an hour. Because I it's think, a multiplayer only game. Yeah, dude. But listen. I, I don't necessarily think that all games should be designed so that you can play for like five hours in a row. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I really don't think it does. I think it's perfectly fine for someone like me while I'm playing Fallout 4 or whatever else I'm doing to think, you know what, for the next hour, I'll just hop into Star Wars Battlefront, yeah. go pew pew, kill some people. It might be <laughs> cheesy, it might be shit, but it's Star Wars. And I'm hopping in there, and I'll hop out in another hour, and I'll come out <clears> as <throat> someone damn. who enjoyed myself a little bit at least. That, like, to me, that just that doesn't make any sense, though. Like, just that doesn't make any sense. Like, in it's any a nice, it's a nice, fun side game. It's yeah, something man. that you can always load up and just play for a little bit. So then, why why is it's it priced, casual? Why is it priced the same as a regular game? And then why that's, is it? That's actually one of my biggest problems with it. Like, yeah, it's sixty dollars. But it's not a sixty dollar game. No, it's a not hundred ten dollar game, because you got to get all the DLC when that comes out, and the season pass is an additional fifty. And guess what? If you don't get the DLC, you're not going to be able to play with the people that do. Yeah, that's that's also something that I was thinking about. I mean, the game is going to improve, is it not? Do you do you guys think it will with a DLC? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll they'll Maybe. add more maps, Depends more. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. seems like a going trend in gaming overall, right? Like they set out a game, and then it's not like it's a it's a finished product. You know, no game seems to be a finished product anymore. Yeah, mm. they're they're that's true. They're leaving space for improvement constantly at all times. Didn't constantly. didn't we talk about that in, in one of the previous weeks? Even like they're they're so. just get, yeah they're just giving you like a third of the game. And then you're getting the second. I mean, that's shitty, the, but that's yeah. just how it is nowadays. I mean, yeah, it's a good business model, man. The EA stock went from twenty dollars back like a year or two ago to now it's at sixty eight dollars a share. Hmm. They're obviously doing something right. And you know what? Here, here's another question I have for you guys. It's not something we could definitively answer, of course, but you know, it's it's this criticism that I always go back to because it's the most common thing that I hear when someone criticizes Battlefront. It's that it's just a shitty shooter, hmm. you know, when it comes down to it. But you know, hasn't haven't shooters been made to be generic? 
you know <laughs> you, mm, i don't know i mean about like that. like the call of duties the call of call of duty is the main example because that's what most people play when it comes to Dude, shooters but on I consoles think... they play call of duty and there's a new call of duty every year every yeah. year or two years there's a new call of duty okay. yeah. so it's just we're constantly being bombarded by the same kind of game so it has become generic like, I remember the first good Call of Duty. I think it was Call of Duty 2 online. That was a fun game. That was a fun game. It just never moved past that. So I think that as a population of gamers, and this is my opinion, I, may, I might be wrong, but I think that as a population of gamers, we've been kind of desensitized to the, the shooter. You know, like how, how good, how fun the shooter actually is and how fun it can be. Like, imagine somebody who has no knowledge of any Call of Duty or any console shooter, right? Okay. And you put Battlefront in front of him, and he plays it. Do you not think that he might think it's a fun game? Yeah. I think it's a fun game. He might not even particularly say that the shooter aspect of it is, you know, bad. Yeah. He might just be like, oh, that's cool. You know, what's wrong with it? I'm shooting at people and they're dying, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it may seem simplistic, but I truly think that. I mean, I, I think we've been we've seen so many first person shooters on consoles that we kind of just think they're all shit now because there's no there's nothing groundbreaking happening. You know what I mean? It's more or less the same. You're running around in a beautiful environment and you're shooting at people and you know they're they're dying in unrealistic ways. <laughs> but you know what? Like Call of Duty, Counter Strike, Battlefield. All these first-person shooters on different platforms from different companies, they all have very tight mechanics. And I don't think that Battlefront, at least from the beta, I'm not playing the main game. Yeah. I'm judging it on the beta. So you guys have a different perspective. I don't think it has the tight mechanics that those other games have. Because It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. I agree. It doesn't. So They did change up a lot of stuff from the beta. Like, well, What were some of the problems you were having, John, well, okay. in the so, beta? Uh, one of the problems was the spawn points. Some of the They have fixed that quite a bit. You don't spawn in the middle of nowhere now. I've heard that a lot of people are still not in the middle of nowhere, but some people still spawn in the middle of combat. They'll just, just spawn. Like I mean, if you that's spawn... very if, few and far between. They changed how the partner system works, too, when you spawn on a partner. How so? That the partner can't be shooting, can't be damaged, can't be like running around. They have to be in like, a safe they, place. They have to be safe. And then you could spawn on him. That's kind of cool. Yeah. That's nice. But you can always spawn on other heroes. If your partner is a hero, you could spawn on him, even if he's in battle. Wait, so and what if your partner's of... not a hero? Your partner's just a person, like okay. a regular thing, but there's a hero active. Can you spawn on the hero and your partner? Mm, uh, do you have the option? No. No, oh. you can't spawn on a random hero. I think it does prioritize where you spawn to where your hero is, though. Oh, oh I see. Like you rally around the wrong. Luke Skywalker yeah. or the Darth yeah. Vader or whatever. Okay, that's cool. But like there, there are some heroes like Leia and Palpatine. Leia's you, a hero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could play as Leia. What does she do? She Shoots has like people. some good blaster and she drops like some shield that has a lot of health. That seems kind of meaningless compared yeah. to the other. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, but compared to the other heroes, that yeah. I, I mean, Han, Han Solo seems cool. Yeah. Yeah, everyone seems cool. They're pretty much the same. They both just run around with the pistol. Well, Han yeah, Solo and Leia? Yeah. No, 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 they're pretty different. Dude, Han Solo is Han Solo, man. Han Solo can like knock people over when uh, when he runs forward and you can kill people like that. It's pretty <laughs> oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. I mean, I, I like I, another thing. I'll, this is the last thing I'll defend about the game because as I said, I'm still... <laughs> when it comes down to it, I am mad that I paid $60 dude, for this honestly, game. Dude, honestly, just get wrecked. I really am. Honestly, just get <laughs> shrizzy Shrek, dude. I, I'm really mad that I paid $60. I would be I mad really too am. because it's not a $60 game. But shit, man. When when you play as Darth Vader, yeah. It's when you hear fun, the Imperial man. March and you're walking down like towards like so many enemies, oh man. And you're just going through them. You know, you slice through them like yeah. butter. It feels like you're Darth Vader. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it's some some skilled dude with a blaster doesn't just come and knock you down completely. Like it's almost impossible. You yeah. know, your, your health is too much. You're too powerful. You're gonna wreck people. That's what I love about it. You know, you you feel like a hero. So that, that's that's How, one wait, more. Okay, plus okay. I actually have a question. Is, isn't there, is there hero mode where everybody's like a hero? No, there's like well, there's two kind of hero. There's one is called hero hunt that one person's randomly chosen to be a hero, uh -huh. and it's basically him against everyone else. Okay, and every like, whoever kills him becomes the hero. Is it fun? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. fun. It I, I think it's one like of the weaker cool. modes. I think it's one of the weaker modes that they have. Okay. Yeah, and then the other hero mode is called heroes versus villains. And okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, it's basically two teams of six people. There's three heroes on one side, three villains on the other, and you're basically trying to wipe out the other heroes before they kill yours. 
And, and that can get pretty hectic. Like that kind of sometimes it usually ends up being one hero left with very low health and one villain left with very low health. And you're kind of like hiding and trying to survive while trying to kill the other guy. It's, it's fun. It could, it could get cool. That's probably the mode that exemplifies Battlefront to me the most. Really? Is it, because in the old Battlefronts, I, I don't know if you guys recall, but like there was like a hero mode or yep. like whatever where everybody's kind of the superpowered Jedi or whatever. And you're on Tatooine. At least as far as I remember, you're mm. on Tatooine usually. And um, which is by far like my favorite planet of star wars period okay. in any in the movies in most of the game in, in like nice of the old republic and tatooine is the bomb i like naboo you like naboo nice yeah, green right. planes it's nice it's pleasant yeah it's cool um <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah like that exemplifies for me battlefront the most is okay. the hero mode so if the hero mode is good like if the heroes versus villains or like if that's like cool Sure, I can get behind it, but three v three seems kind of dumb. Like, well, no, no, no. It's six v six. Six v six. Yeah, so it's like three heroes and three um, like soldiers. Honestly, dude, oh, you know, you know okay. what? Th- that game would be much better, I think, if there were a few more of those infantry. If it were like three heroes and like five infantry on each side. Or yeah, like if it was six. like a ten v ten, maybe yeah. like a bigger mode. I mean, sure. I they put, might make it. I mean, knows, th- that yeah. game mode was cool because I was able to play all the heroes. That's pretty much the only reason that mm. game mode was cool. Otherwise, whenever I spawned as one of like the soldiers or like the bodyguards or whatever, I felt pretty powerless, man. I was just trying not to die. Yeah. Right. That that's kind of what it felt nah, like. You're just so trying you to think- like chip away at their health. Like that's yeah. sort of your your job. So you, you know? think that would be mitigated by more of you, <laughs> more of fa- yeah, more no, no, totally, totally. You have something to shoot at yeah. that won't kill you instantly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's actually, like, that's the one thing about Battlefront that interests me the least, like, the heroes. I sort of like just big units, like, a lot of soldiers kind of, like, running at each other, like, blasters flying everywhere. That's why like, Walker that's Assault the is appeal. amazing. Yeah, that's the appeal of Battlefront to me. Like, not the heroes. I was about to say, I've played almost... I like the all- scale of it, you Yeah, know? I've played almost all of the game modes, and the one game mode that I keep playing is Walker Assault. Yeah. It's really the only Isn't one. Isn't that the main one? That is that the... Like, that's the one that everyone says is the best one, the only one worth Pretty doing much. at all. That and Supremacy, I guess. Supremacy, it's like the TF2 style. Like, there's five nodes that you're trying to capture. It's um, like King of the Hill, but numerous hills. Yeah, okay. but you have to capture them sequentially, like one at a time. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the, the reason why I think Walker Assault is probably the ga- best game mode is because, like, there's variation in the battle. You mm-hmm. know, there's, there's as I mean said, there's there's a lot going on. Yeah. And that's one of the cool parts about it, you know. We were just talking about how the aesthetics are, like, one of the main selling points to it. The aesthetics are on full display yeah. when you're playing Walker Assault. Yeah. You hear everything. You know, you you hear all that there is to hear in Battlefront. You hear the bombs going off randomly. You hear the AT ATs walking. You hear the ATSTs shooting at people. You hear the vehicles like whizzing past you. You hear Commander Leia has joined the battlefield. The rally to her, you know. Commander yeah. like, Leia, dude, there's just something wrong about her. Right? <laughs> Junk. Anyway, it's, Anyways. it's really <laughs> that's that's the game mode. That's the definitive game mode, I think. Dude, I, I mean, I've seen like the 4K screenshots, and I've seen like, yeah. like YouTube videos. I've seen people. I, I watch people playing. I mean. I mean, Endora is beautiful. Hoth is beautiful. Like, the entire game is just beautifully done. The sound is amazing. Everything is cool about the aesthetic portion of it. It's just the game. The game itself, itself is just empty. It's just, there's nothing to it, man. There's like, what did what, what was EA doing this whole time? What was DICE doing this but whole then, time? Okay, was that it? Here's was their engine, like, they're, they're using their Frostbite engine to render, like, yeah. the exact fauna of, like, where they shot Endor in the movies you know, like that's cool, and then that's where their budget went. That's it. Hmm. Like, but that, dude, like, let me just pose a question, and there might be legitimate answers to this, none that I know of, okay. really. But what would you? <laughs> okay, what, great question. What man. would you have done to to improve the gameplay? I would have. I mean, we're all criticizing. Yeah. Okay, but when it comes down to it, what would I mean? The people dishing out the criticism. What would you do? What would you have done different? I would have gone closer to Battlefield, in the shooter department, and. I would have like basically phrased the game in the context of Battlefield but because then, that's what the developer knows best. But then they would have been roasted for that too, I think. They, they would, would have be... just said it's Battlefield on Star Wars planets. Yes. It would have been stupid. Okay, dude, but you know what? Everyone called Fallout 3 Oblivion with guns. Everyone calls Fallout 4 Skyrim with guns. And if they called... Uh, and and those games I mean, are those selling... Are, that's ama- a can of worms, man. That's a really yeah, but big those difference. Okay, but those games are selling amazingly well because they i mean okay let's not get into it but like they they have like their own strengths and stuff right 
Uh, and if you called Battlefront basically Battlefield in Star Wars universe, it would be at least a good game on top of being Star Wars as opposed to just Star Wars. But then it would not a bad be, game. It would not be individual, mm-hmm. which is what it is. It's individual. It's Star Wars. But it's not individual. It's, it's just it's a cash grab thing. for the movie. It's just like you. they made it again because I mean, that has the rights. I mean, that's a separate it. criticism. But what I'm saying is <laughs> if, if they made it like Battlefield, dude, it... Maybe not. Maybe not make it like Battlefield. No, but, but like start just with Battlefield. Change, yeah, yeah. Like use that as a framework. Like I wish there was some customization to like the blasters that I have. You know, there's eleven blasters total in the game, and every single one has the same targeting reticule when you zoom in. Like that. That just seems sloppy. And all the you know? all the characters eventually, when you get all the cards, you're gonna have the same jet pack. You're gonna have the same grenade yeah. styles. You're gonna have the same like guns. Like. There's no class differentiation like mm-hmm. in Battlefield. You know, like Battlefield was cool because it was very squad based. This absolutely abandons that it abandons any form of tactics there's no you don't need your brain for this game you simply go forward you zerg you yeah. zerg, at least as far as the beta that's true was concerned yeah. you zerg towards the enemy and you're just zerging and you die and you respawn and you zerg again is that if you get good at zerging it's kind of fun i mean well, bro <laughs> if you get good at zerging go play starcraft you don't need to be playing battlefront like you oh, know man. i'm not physically capable of playing that game was <laughs> yeah, stop. That's, I'm not that's an actually physically demanding game. As funny as that bro? sounds, I'm, what's, your, I'm, what's I'm, your APR, bro? <laughs> I'm I'm like shit at uh... your fingers just cramped after oh, yeah. the game, dude. Yeah, it's I don't know, fun. dude. I, as far as Battlefront goes, like again, I'm gonna say not my not my ticket, not yeah. my style. Like it's not worth sixty dollars, let alone one hundred ten. I'm gonna boil field. it down to I'm not happy. I paid sixty dollars. It could be a much better game. But shit, man, sometimes I could just yeah. spend an hour or two in it and just hop right off. So I have a question for you, Mahood. Yeah. In a few months from now, when the DLC comes out, are you going to get it? Who, man. Uh, well, the free one's coming out in a few weeks, in like a week. What's the, in the, the Battle of one? Jakku? Yes. It's a, I, I believe it's one of the big maps. So it's a, a large map and a smaller <clears throat> map that you could do like the smaller modes on. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, it depends on what I'm getting and how much it costs. Well, for the season pass, that covers four DLC, which is, I think, what was it, like four new heroes, um, new blasters, and a few new maps. 50 bucks. 50 bucks? Basically, yeah. A new fucking game? Yep. Fuck <clears throat> that. Yeah. Fuck that. And I'll probably end up but getting But you know it. what, dude? If you don't get it, my Everyone's going to probably end up buying it. I'm saying fuck that, and I might buy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck them. It doesn't matter. Like, you're saying fuck that. But everyone's going to get it who's playing Battlefront at the time. And if you still want to play Battlefront and you want to have a good time, you're going to have to get it because yeah. that's just the model that they have. It's it's literally a machine. It's a machine of marketing. It's a machine of like cash grabbing. It's It's just straight up. They know what they're doing and they're doing it. And they're not even concerned with the quality of the game. They're concerned with the aesthetic quality, sure, because yeah. they have to make sure that's really well done. That's It's Frostbite 3 engine. It's 2015 bordering on 2016 yeah. now and they need to make sure that that stuff is up to snuff they don't need to make sure of anything else they know you're gonna eat it up they're you're gonna lap it up not you personally my head but people who play the game you know that's just how yeah. it is but yeah i i agree i agree i agree they're shafting everybody they're not they're not doing as good a job as they could have done for such a loyal fan base hmm. you know it is a cash grab but fuck them I'm going to enjoy it once in a while. Do you guys it, remember where that entire thing started with like paying for different DLC maps? I want to say it's a Call of Duty thing. Wait, Am I wrong you, in saying that? DLC in general or no, DLC no, no, maps no. and shooters? In like multiplayer games, you have to buy uh, a DLC map. Bro, it's either Call of Duty or it's Halo. It's not... Well, Did Halo really do that? I don't remember... Uh, Halo might have done that. I, that's what I'm saying. It's, I, it's one of the two. Hmm. Be, dude call of duty set a lot of really shitty trends in yeah. games in general like co- like I, I mean halo halo 1 2 and 3 were very different games before call of duty really became popular yeah and then call of duty became popular and all of a sudden you have like the arcade shootiness became more realistic mm. and you had like power-ups and this weird like 
I don't know, like, there, there was just, like, this very weird trend in how Call of Duty affected other shooters, particularly Halo, which is, like, one of my favorites. I think the early Halos are probably the best first-person shooters to ever exist. Bro, in my, in my opinion, opinion, yes. Halo uh, 3 yeah. is one of my favorite games. Yes. I, I played a lot of that. It's right up my alley, dude. Yeah. It's, a two, it's like, it's arcadey enough, but also fun and realistic. You know when you get into a firefight who will win. I, I love Halo. Halo yeah. is one of my favorite series. The first, tri- the original trilogy is just memories on memories do just flooding into me Mm -hmm. you know like that that's all it really is yeah i I never played one or two too much because i didn't have an xbox but once i got the 360 like halo 3 was the one game that oh man you know i wonder why i game a lot i wonder why we have such fond memories of it you know it was the first thing that came to mind for me like i remember like the physics system in, in halo yeah it was really interesting you know like a grenade would blow up next yeah, to a yeah, gun, yeah, yeah. and the gun would bounce off the walls yeah. and like dude it, you could jump up and just like slowly come down there was something you know like atmospheric you're, about you're, it. like the vehicles were really fun like the being in a warthog was so fun. Dude. Yeah, it was yeah. really fun and driving be, it and having could, someone in the back shooting at people. Or you could be in the back while someone else drove. Like, that's... Uh, bro. And the ghost. The ghost. ghost. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where you could zoom yeah. on the ghost and just slam into people, dude. Like, oh, God. Why? Like, games don't... Man, I don't know. Like, if Battlefront could do that, <laughs> if Battlefront could, like, I do that... I wish Bungie anything. made Battlefront. Uh, oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think the I don't think modern Bungie is the same as. I don't oh, know, man. Just what is Im- Bungie up to these days? Destiny. Just imagine Destiny. Oh yeah, huh? But, yeah, man. But Battlefront. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at that. Destiny's mechanics are pretty good. You know, Destiny, but Battlefront, like an MMO Star Wars. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, like cool. the mechanics, like a Battlefront ish. Yeah, yeah. The shooting that mechanics of Destiny. Just in Battlefront, dude. Instead of whatever they're using I can, now. I can easily see. Wow, that's a great idea. A Destiny, but instead of the Destiny lore and everything, that is just battle. Like it's Star Wars. Yeah. But de- but Bungie made it as as though it were Destiny. I mean, yeah. That would be so fun. I'm on board. That would be literally as fun or or better than Destiny is right now, <laughs> except Star Wars, and and like, <laughs> da, da, wow. Like, uh, that's the first time I've ever actually heard that spoken in front of me. And I'm um, like, <laughs> flabbergasted. Like, that's a great idea. Have they tried making an MMO for Star Wars? Oh, yeah. There's Dude, an MMO now. What do you mean? The, I mean, I'm kind of oblivious to oh, that. Oh, the Old Republic, man. Yeah. It so, just went free to play like a year ago, I think. Yeah. Is it good? Uh, no. Oh, I didn't really play well, it. Did you okay. play it, John? Yeah, I played it. So, I, well, I played the... Well, okay. I'm being disingenuous. I didn't play it. I played the beta week, like not beta weekend, free weekend. Okay. I played like just one weekend that was that it was like a free, like anyone could download it and play it. Right. I played it. I played B- Bounty Hunter. Very fun. I liked it a lot. Um, and I have a lot of friends who play it actually, uh, and they give me very good feedback on it. Like they mm-hmm. like it a lot. The the customization is cool. The grinding is cool. The stories in the game are very well done. Like all the classes have individual stories that are fun. Um, if it's I don't know what the free to play like does to it. I do know that the free to I do know what the free to play does to it in some senses. Is that it limits what you can do in the game itself. Like you can't send like uh, messages to certain like certain players. You can't join in a party until a certain level. Whatever. If you're free to play, yeah. etc. If you actually buy the game and play it for a little while, I think it's cool. I think I think the Old Republic is a pretty cool MMO as far as things are concerned. It is doing well, and they always update it with new content. Hmm. Why not? I heard the story part of it is actually very well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For some class, for a lot of classes, yeah. For some classes, I hear it's very bad. Okay. But like Bounty Hunter is cool. Like the some saying some people say like some of the classes are straight out of what uh, Knights of the Old Republic three would have been. Hmm. So that's cool. That's very good quality, and it's voice acted. It, like you can make decisions in the MMO. Like you can choose to be light side, dark side, etc. Like it's kind of neat. Like it's a neat little thing, dude. They have an MMO, but they it's not very mechanically sound like Destiny would be. I guess like it's not that kind of MMO. It's like it's it's a WoW MMO. But Star Wars has been really hit and miss over the years with their games. I think. I think most of their games have been more positive than than negative. I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe because we don't hear about the negative ones. Well, no. Yeah, I don't know. Do you remember that game? I think it was on the GameCube where uh, Outcast. Was it Outcast? Jedi Outcast? Yeah. yeah. Was it that or Rogue Squadron? 
Well, yeah, that that too. No, Outcast was the one where you can you make. You have a lightsaber and you can like walk next to a wall and just like leave a trail in the yeah. wall as you're cutting it. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a good that game. That sounds fun. Yeah, man, that, <laughs> that was an incredible cool. game. That, that's just like a small detail from it. Like that's not what the game is about. You but... could like customize all <laughs> that. Right. Are you sure? I mean, it's not about doing graffiti with your lightsaber. That's not Star Wars. Oh, okay. Oh man, that sounds so fun though. <laughs> Jet Set Radio, but Star oh, Wars. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, man. Oh, that'd be cool, dude. So, so going back to Battlefront for just a moment. Yeah. Uh, do I we just, have to? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we were just talking about the DLC and yeah. how they're going to make some some DLC. So I wanted to see your guys' opinions. Do you think that ultimately, maybe a couple of years down the line, because they're not going to make another Battlefront anytime soon, do you think that they're going to make it into a playable game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. what was that supposed to mean? It is a playable game. I mean, I was Fuck just talking guys. about how it's playable. D- do you think they're going to make it into a good game? Let me yes. rephrase that. Do you think that it has the potential to be made into an actually objectively good game? Yes. You do? Yes. I'll tell you why. Because in two years down the line, there's going to be a ton of DLC. But there's going to be a game of the year edition that you could buy everything for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks even. Everything. Yep. And that's it, dude. That's the game. So you guys are beta testing it for me. <laughs> you guys are basically oh, going right, through man. the gruel and the shit for me when I'm going to enjoy it. That's basically the the status quo of how EA is going to work, I think. Fair with enough. the game. Yeah. It's going to be made to a point that is going to be very fun for a lot more people than it already is. And that's going to be when a price drops and there's more content. That's just how it goes in business. All right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean... Yes. A question for you. Go for it. Do we have any wonderful emails this week? Oh my goodness. Do we have some emails? That sounds like we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> we have two. We have two emails. Whoa. The dynamic duo of emails again. Yes. We have one from our sincerely beautiful Video James. Oh, hello, Video James. Damn, bro. He's 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 a nice little uh, loyal listener, huh? Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, Video James asks, if you were trapped in a video game forever... What game would it be? Pokemon. The twist is... Uh, <laughs> that was the quick, twist man. Is, if you die in the game, you die in real life. Oh, Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't change my answer. Video Video James says my choice would be Minecraft. What's yours? What? what? Okay. Holy shit. I don't know. Minecraft seems very hostile to <laughs> yeah, live in. Bro, you I, die, I would not want to live in Minecraft at all. the first night and you're dead forever? Cool, bro. Yeah. Sounds good. Pokemon, you don't die, dude. You just book, battle Pokemon. Yeah, you <laughs> you faint. just faint. Or black out. Yeah. And then you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably take like Animal Crossing or um, Harvest Moon or just something, something friendly. Really, dude? Yeah, something pleasant. Damn, bro. I would like... Why not like... Skyrim or I was about no. to say I was about to kind of just give that generic answer but it's it's truly what it is I, I just I'm such a fan of Skyrim dude that I have to say Skyrim although I must say you're gonna get wrecked in Skyrim I, I would dude. get wrecked would in you Skyrim be? and not what only race? that not only that I would be shamed as the only person in that video game who who isn't a skinny person <laughs> I don't know if you guys, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed that it's actually kind of funny there are no fat people in Bethesda games <laughs> yeah, just oh, none no, at all there are in, in Fallout 4 oh yeah one yeah. person I saw that that post yeah, yeah, too dude yeah, yeah. yeah. Just Reddit, one, dude. they found one fat person you browse reddit too that's, bro? yeah that's the joke dude there are JK. no fat people in that game yeah there aren't but you can make your <laughs> so guy i mean i'd like to live fat. in skyrim but as soon as i walk into white run they're gonna be looking at me like i'm some really just like an ugly abomination <laughs> <laughs> no dude uh, but wait okay so what race would you be in skyrim oh man human humanity but what Which i mean human? what do you There's mean so dude come on you can't give me that like I've never played this game before kind of answer, dude. Would you be a Nord? Would you be a Breton? Would you be an Imperial? A Breton? Uh, it's a Breton. Breton, Breton, whatever, man. I would JJ be... JJ Abrams. <laughs> Get real, dude. Abrams. <laughs> May- Melee. Melee. Dude, I'm sorry. I, I, John it's, it's slipping my mind right now, but the the hmm? the red, like the darker complexion. The red guards? Red guard, yeah. Red guard. Yo. What? Yeah. No, fuck yeah. that. I'm a red guard. You no. know what, dude? Actually, this is interesting. I played the the MMO, the red the thing. Uh, oh, right. The Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, the Elder Scrolls Online. I played the Elder Scrolls Online, and I'm a role player, so I played on like I played like role playing. So I wanted to learn about like the character I was making and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I played a red guard. Red guards have like a really cool history, and they have a cool place that they came from. I really liked it. It was huh. cool. I, I like. I would. I would not mind being a red guard at all, dude. They're physically capable. They're cool. Like exactly. They come from like this weird desert 
people who have yeah, like and I'm two like Middle clans. Eastern, yeah. so it uh, kind of makes sense. <laughs> they are they are basically like the Middle Easterns of that world. I yeah. think. Yeah, and they have some cool dreads too. Yeah, what would you be? Uh, I mean, if you had to choose one of the races, not, um, not necessarily human only, but either either Nord or Imperial. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Say- I'm gonna say Imperial. Yeah, I think you'd lean towards Imperial yeah. too, just knowing you. Just because they're they're armed, they're, they're Romans, man. They're cool. Yeah, they're basically the Romans. Yeah. I, you know what, dude? If I had to pick one of the races, he would either be Red Guard or a Dark Elf. Dark Elf. I like Dark dude, Elf a lot. Elf suck. Gross. They do elves suck. They do in almost every iteration of other fantasy, but in Elves and Elder Scrolls, I think are really cool. Elves and Elder Scrolls are very distinct from one another. Trash of the world. Dude, <laughs> get real, please. Get real. Trash of the world. Oh, God. So how about that I'll second email, I mean? Yeah, so our second <laughs> email. Screw you, video James. <laughs> Screw you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> our second email is from Eric Zeit. And he asks, how many East Coast skis do I have to trip over be- before I become a West Coast ski? <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Okay, dude. So I'm going to repeat this question. Maybe John can to, translate. I need to digest it, dude. Hold on. Maybe John can translate. <laughs> As someone who, who who I think knows that person. How many East Coast skis does it take to... How many East Coast skis do I have to trip? Oh, do I have to trip? Do I have to trip over to become a, a West, West Coast, Coast ski? ski? Dude, you can't become a West Coast... Oh, whoa. You can't become a West Coast ski, dude. You were born a West Coast ski, dude. It's a metaphysical state of being. Like, it is who you are, dude. It, oh, I West don't know Coast, about that. This is entering coast. a realm of jargon that I, I just do not dude, understand. You don't understand because we West Coast, dog. <laughs> West Coast, best coast. You can't become West Coast. You are West Coast. No, no, I, I'm, but, but like to talk about like what Eric is saying, um, I think tripping over East Coast ski is a very big part of being a West Coast yeah, ski. No, essentially. No. Like, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a part of it. It's a part of the culture. I mean, dude, if you're West Coast ski, then East Coast ski doesn't even enter your radar because East Coast ski is like GG inferior yeah, but, ski, dude. But, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but if you see an East Coast ski walking around, like you, you have to trip him. Yeah, no, you have to trip him. Dude. See? But it's you're already a West Coast ski at that point. Okay. So I guess so one. So what if, what if an one. East Coast ski the trips answer over? The answer is one. Just, one. just one. It takes one. E- you, you trip one East Coast ski on purpose, dude. You're a West Coast I'm ski. I'm very dude. confused. So what if an East Coast ski trips an East Coast ski in the East Coast? Then that guy's just a dick. <laughs> and straight up, he's just a dick. He's a he's a he's from Boston, DC, wherever he's from, dude. I don't care. He's just a douche. Oh man, that man. that is some question. Yeah, West Coast, best coast, huh? Yeah, we West Coast, man. I we guess. had a website. Me, hike, our egg. We had a website called wewestcoast.com. It didn't go anywhere, but it was it was quite the it was quite the. You guys still have the domain? <laughs> I uh, no, we don't. Uh, well, I mean, I think it, the domain's still available, but yeah, I don't know. We need I, to annex it into. <laughs> we need to annex into the next it level. In, into the next level. We West Coast is the subsidiary of Next Level <laughs> Podcast. Huh? Sure, I'm down. Why not? Yeah, man. Very good question. I feel like I explored my own character through that. I preferred the first question. <laughs> Dude, honestly, both dark, top quality bro, questions. What, both of you, by the way, dark elves are not in infi- dark elves are yes, they are. No, no they're, they're not. not. They're terrible. They're disgusting, and they should all be eradicated. What, what do you all mean? the elves? I mean, what I mean, mean, I mean, inexplicably becomes a racist inside oh, of yeah. video game universe. No, yeah, the, the only thing I'm racist against is elves? like non-humanity. <laughs> Wait, you <laughs> dwarves like, are okay. You like dwarves? Yeah, dwarves okay, are okay. Okay, so what about like half or hobbits, gnomes? They're, they're fine. They're, they're more human than not. Not gnomes. Gnomes are gross. You pity the gnomes. Yeah. Every time, gnomes every are time the I saw stock. a gnome in like WoW, I was like, oh, gross. Dude, the gnomes can't take their city back from like level 13 trogs. Like the, the gnome organ is taken over by like 13 elites. Yeah, that's kind of that dumb dungeon. that like they... Like fucking take it back. Yeah, dude. Noobs. Yeah. Just I like orcs. In, yeah, orcs in, are cool. in, in, uh, in World of Warcraft, I like orcs. Or in Warcraft universe, I like orcs. I don't like orcs in Lord of the Rings. I think orcs in Lord of the Rings are dumb. Yeah. They're uh, sort of meant to be, though, right? Yeah, they're no. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're meant to be dumb. I don't like them, and I'm not meant to like them. So that's yeah. about it. But in Warcraft, they're very cool. Yeah, I like orcs. I like Draenor. I I like most of the, the Warcraft Draenor resources. fucking space goats, dude. Dude, you know what? Draenor and Blood Elves are mm. by far not my favorite races, but my favorite starting areas of World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, those are pretty cool. Yeah, they have yeah. the best starting areas in my opinion, and like the best. The Blood Elves one is really cool. Like they have a brooms, kind of like uh, on like enchanted yeah. brooms, like just cleaning the floor. The second area, <laughs> just like washing you go the windows, to, well, I like cool. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Ghostlands. 
It's like yeah. a giant scar from the beginning to the end of Ghostlands, which is like this huge temple of like undead and stuff. It's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. I think that does it for us. If you guys have any questions for us, please send it over to mail at the next level.com and we'll get to it next week. We accept East Coastky questions. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> it's okay. We won't trip you. West Coastky and East Coastky, North Coastky, South Coastky. All welcome. All welcome here at the next level. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Good night. <laughs>